the fruit of sort of profound reading or research. Uh, rather, it's sort of some reflections on uh, the topic which uh, uh, arise from having discussed it in the party, heard it discussed uh, o over many years. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is to ask a few questions associated with this subject and then make an attempt to pull together some of the threads at the end, uh, convincingly or otherwise, uh, depending on how you see things. Um, but in any case, I hope what I'm going to say will give some substance for discussion and debate afterwards. Uh, now, when the Swansea branch of the Socialist Party contested several local elections in the late 80s, we produced a manifesto which outlined our position and the reasons why we were contesting. And at the end um, of, of the campaign, of the elections, we had a few copies of the manifesto left over, and I kept them as one does keep such things. And I'm going to give everyone a copy of that now for reasons you'll see in a moment. Um, and apart from the fact that this is, uh, in a very small way, something of a, his, a historical document, I mean, after all, who knows when we'll next contest an election in Swansea. Um, apart from that, uh, uh, it does uh, sort of tie in uh, in a fairly significant way to uh, the context of this particular talk. And when I've given these out, I'll explain to you why. Uh, they're a little bit the worse for wear because it's, I think it's 19, I think it's 87 or 88, around about 20 years ago. Um, now, if you open it, um, if you open this um, manifesto, you'll see a heading uh, right in the middle called You Can't Change Human Nature. You see that heading, You Can't Change Human Nature. Uh, if, you, uh, if you read under that heading, I won't suggest you read it down in detail, but if you do, you'll find a fairly standard exposition of the party's views on this topic, you know, on the idea that people put across that you can't change human nature, of course. Uh, um, for a different view, but there's something in the final sentence of that section that caused a certain amount of contention within the party at the time, a certain amount of consternation among some members. If you read the final sentence of that section, uh, just above the cartoon there, it says, we will also be providing for ourselves the secure material framework within which we can attend to all the inner non-material needs we may have. That's what the final sentence reads. And it was the words inner and non-material that were contentious, at least among some people in the party at the time. Now, it was a text which in the end was agreed by the executive committee of the party, as, as such uh, documents need to be. But the point I'm making here is that... Um, um, or, or the point I'm making will be clearer if I tell you that in the original draft that uh, Swansea Branch sent to the executive committee... In place of the words inner and non-material was the word spiritual. In other words, the manifesto wanted to talk about spiritual needs. Now, the executive committee didn't like that. And the final version was a kind of compromise with Swansea Branch, which, even as agreed, actually wasn't entirely popular with, uh, with all party members. But, that was the, uh, but, but this was the text that was finally agreed. Now, why wasn't it popular with some party members? Well... The argument was that you can't talk about inner and non-material needs uh, in a sort of meaningful way because you can't define them. It's sort of airy-fairy stuff, smacks of the idealist view of history, and the party's view is solidly materialist. As for spiritual needs, well, that was, that was even worse, because it suggested some kind of religious connotation, and the party, of course, has always been implacably opposed to religious ideas. Uh, the materialist basis of the socialist idea uh, was, I thought, quite well summed up in a talk uh, with the same title as this one, actually, is so <coughs> in the faith, but completely different sort of uh, approach. Uh, but in a talk with the same title as this, given by a member of Swansea Branch recently. And in his talk, that member said the following. I'll just quote a couple of, uh, couple of lines from, from his talk. He said, human affairs... <coughs> are a part of the material world, which means that an explanation of social events means investigating their material basis to discover the laws governing social development. Socialists are materialists. That's the end of that quote. And I can't argue with it. 
But does it mean that mention of non-material, as here, or even worse, spiritual uh, needs, does it mean that mention, of, uh, use of such words, is ruled out in socialist discourse? Well, I was given a lot of food for thought about this in the course of the election campaigns which we had in Swansea in the late 80s, uh, for one of which you, you've got the manifesto. Um, I'll just say a brief word about those campaigns because it, it is relevant to, to, to the point I'll then make. Uh, we went about the campaigns in Swansea very seriously, even scientifically, you might say, and um, what we did was to, a month before the election, we primed every house in the area with a short leaflet, not this one, but, but a shorter leaflet, uh, saying who we were, uh, what we stood for, why we were standing, etc. We then, um, a couple of weeks before the election date, conducted a delivery of this leaflet. Um, and then, finally, we canvassed, believe it or not, we, we were very enthusiastic, we, 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 we had quite a lot of people on the ground, uh, people came to help, but we knocked on as many doors in the ward as we could, asking people if they'd read the leaflet and what they thought about it, and, um, and, and quite a few had, and uh, I, I was gratified by the number of favourable reactions that we got on the doorstep. Now, you can never be sure what this means, uh, you know, in some cases it's just politeness or something like that, but you do tend to get a feel for who's being genuine and who's not, and uh, there did seem to be quite a lot of what I'd call considered support. But apart from being gratified by that, I was also a little bit um, alarmed by a certain aspect of it, um, and I was alarmed by the fact that some of our would-be supporters, when you got talking to them, revealed that they were believers, religious believers, ones to whom religion mattered because they actually mentioned it. So, Having read this and saying they agreed with it, they then said, oh, by the way, I, you know, I believe this, believe that, 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 that they were religious believers. Uh, and this sort of disconcerted me a bit. Uh, and I must say that at the time when people mentioned this, uh, I didn't sort of argue with it on, on, on the doorstep. Uh, I didn't suggest to these people that uh, because they were believers, they shouldn't vote for us because we only wanted votes from people who were atheists. That didn't seem the right thing to do somehow. Maybe I should have done, but I didn't. Uh, in fact, what I did was to try to encourage their agreement with our case. I sort of tried to put the implications of our case to them and sort of left the religious thing on one side. But you know, it did trouble me and, and, and still does because uh, uh, clearly uh, there was sort of something which I, I couldn't quite grasp sort of going on here. But what seemed to me to be happening anyway was that our case was exercising a disproportionately large attraction on what I'd call people with religious conditioning or what, other, what others might call people with a religious disposition. Uh, maybe it's something that we can discuss later. Uh, and it led me to pose to myself the question, why should this be so? Well, why should people of a religious disposition or who were religious in one form or the other uh, find uh, what we had to say sort of relatively attractive? I uh, never really answered that question, and um, the same question keeps posing itself to me whenever we get interest in the party or applications to join the party from people who tell us they're religious or they believe in God or some such thing, and, and it does happen. It happens not infrequently, and uh, you know there are various sort of responses that we have according to what they tell us. Uh, I came across it most recently, just two or three months ago, when I agreed to respond to an inquirer from the World Socialist Movement website, he'd written with an inquiry, and he'd obviously looked closely at what we were about and was clearly sympathetic. He said that in the past he'd been a member of the militant tendency, but had quickly ditched them. <coughs> he was only sorry he hadn't come into contact with the SPG be before. That's fine. Uh, and I'll quote an extract, I I've got it um, written down here, from his reply to me after I'd written to him. His reply to me said, between sending my mail and getting your reply, I took the plunge anyway and sent off for a subscription to the Standard and I'm looking forward to receiving it. The only points from, from extensive reading of your site which I disagreed on were surrounding religion stroke atheism. I was brought up Catholic and whilst no longer a believer in strictly organised religion, I still defend the right of people to hold whatever belief they may have in a God or deity. 
providing this is not connected with the political struggle or has any basis of interference 